like this receiving core is progressing. I like them. You yeah. know, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. There's two freshmen and a sophomore out there, but I like them, and I think that uh, they're very capable of making plays, and I think they're growing up as we go. So, you know, the I think they they have to be ready. Mm -hmm. When you kind of just look at both of these teams. Uh, really good defenses, offenses that have sputtered at times. You kind of just expect a grind it out, low scoring type of game. I've told the team it could be a mirror of the last game, but I'm hesitant to do that because I've been surprised before, right? I mean, I, you know, with the, the expectations that everybody thinks about because of statistics mm -hmm. don't always play out. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful about that. You have to end up playing the game that you're in. Uh, I've been in these games where everybody expected 10 to 7 and they were 40 to 37. Yeah. So I, I don't make any assumptions about that. You just have to play the game that you're in. On Sunday you, you talked about the, the penalties and especially procedure stuff, holding, that, that type of thing. Yeah. The last few days I've noticed whether it's you know Garrett or another coach, like when somebody makes a mistake, they're really on them. Has that been something that's happened naturally? Has that been something conscious where you said, hey, we got to – we got to bust these well, guys in practice if they're not it, doing it. It's really no do. different than when we started camp. Uh, but but it's painfully obvious. I might have lost this the last game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it might have. So, you know, and it doesn't have to be that way. We cleaned it up. We were perfect against Colorado procedurally and then uh, lost our focus. And, and in a game that goes to double overtime, who knows what makes the difference? You know, you can say you're not sure about this or that, but I could say maybe that did. So we got to clean that up. We can't we can't be in these tight games and make mistakes on, on our own that cost us the game. If you know we'll lose again. How do you focus on? How do you refocus the guys? Train, sort of train them in that well, it's all about focus, really. So it's just about talking about and emphasizing concentration, which actually we do. A lot of those plays are actually alert plays where the quarterback is making a change. And so in order to, if we want to get into the best play possible, then you can't be jumping off sides. So you just go make it worse. You decided to let, uh, you know, have John uh, call the plays now, or, or yeah. how is that working? So, yeah. And yeah. When, when was that decided? A couple weeks ago, he did it at Colorado. Yeah, and uh, I just interject when I want to, or feel the need. Do you feel that need very often? He probably, yeah. <laughs> Once a play caller, always a play caller, right? Yeah, that's hard to get away from. You really praised the special teams on, on Thursday, especially against yeah. how good Utah's unit was. This kind of maybe, again, I, I know it's hard to project how things are going to go, but this feels like a game where special teams might be oh, a really sure. big thing as, as well. Yeah. To turn the field in one play. They've got a big play guy. That I mean, they have a guy with a lot of talent in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can change a game in a minute. So, we're, it's kind. It's it's in a lot of ways special teams, defense, offense. A lot of ways a mirrored type game uh, with a real, real good defense, a really, really talented returner, and then he's a great offensive player too. So, there's a lot, a lot of issues that are similar. Uh, that we're going to have to deal with and obviously do better at. The offensive line in the situation it is right now, um, is there any thought about like moving guys around anymore or, you know, uh, doing that? I know no, we've pretty trained at all different spots. So. Yeah, they do. And, and uh, you know, at, at this point, we feel like we've positioned the group that's healthy and available in the best possible way that we can. And the best way to have done that is that's the way they've then been practicing for quite a while. You know, Dustin Stanton's been there practicing that spot for a long time. He's definitely the best guy to put in there at that, at that position. Well, you mentioned uh, Weinrich, uh, his situation a day or two ago. Is What, what are you thinking for him? Is he right now, he is a very viable backup and, uh, you know, has, I think, progressed physically uh, probably to the point where, uh, like I said, he could go in the game. Any final word on uh, uh, Isaac Samuel that you were talking earlier this week? No, there is no final word. There's just it's, there's not any imminent development as far as him being ready to play soon. But it's not really definitive as to he's, he's done. Do you lock you something down for the year? No, I don't think there's any need to do that. You know, I think that. Uh, 
you know, it, it, like I said, at this point, there is no it, nothing right around the corner. So uh, we'll we'll take the long term future as it comes and not be too definitive because we really don't know. How are you guys uh, uh, preparing the, <laughs> the uh, uh, run defense this week? Devontae uh, had himself a game last time on the team last week. And what are you guys doing uh, adjusting this week? Well, obviously one of the key issues in every game, but particularly against teams like Utah and Stanford that are run-oriented type power teams, particularly Stanford, every bit of emphasis about responsibility is the key issue there. You know, the correct gap the correct angle, all the parts uh, that you need to have, you know, and then, of course, with the finish, making a tackle.